Hi, my name is Shoaib Khan. I am the Vice President and Head of Digital Transformation Solutions Practice at Abacus Consulting. Abacus Wired is an initiative to create awareness about digital transformation, how organizations can stay relevant in fourth industrial revolution and how these organizations can really benefit by participating in digital economy. Today we have Mr. Yusuf Hussain, who is the CEO of Ignite. Thank you, Yusuf, for joining Abacus Wide. Really appreciate your time. So you've been doing a lot of stuff uh, for the past one and a half years uh, since you joined Ignite as the Chief Executive Officer. Uh, so we just wanted to understand what you have been doing to promote the digital economy of Pakistan, what are the initiatives that you're working on, and what are the really exciting areas uh, which you think you want to share with us. Um, you know, first of all, before I begin, let me just say that ever since I did my first startup, mm -hmm. which is which was Cressoft Inc. back mm -hmm. in uh, early 90s, mm -hmm. one has been involved in the digital economy. But, and even before joining um, Ignite, uh, mm -hmm. I launched an accelerator mm -hmm. and worked with a bunch of companies. Right. I was managing an uh, angel fund and right. uh, probably uh, went uh, heard pitches from maybe 150 companies. Mm -hmm. At Ignite, uh, we are doing some exciting stuff, like you, mm -hmm. like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, under the direction of the board and in consultation with the board, obviously, mm -hmm. and the IT minister, mm -hmm. we are rolling out incubators in the last year and a quarter. Uh, we've rolled out three. We are sitting in one of them uh, in Lahore, and I see Lahore. And then we had Islamabad yeah. back in February of last year. Mm -hmm. We had Peshawar first week of this yeah. year, and we hope to launch Karachi and Quetta mm -hmm. first half of May. Right. So we hope to have 170 plus startups in here mm -hmm. by the end of this year. So that is uh, hopefully going to be a great source of innovation in the country. In addition to that, we fund startups and innovative projects about five or six a quarter. And we launched a program to train uh, one million people in That's intermediary and basic skills, digital skills. You know, uh, you talked about digi skills. Are we ready for the, you know, uh, digital future? Uh, insofar as Pakistan is concerned, mm -hmm. we need certain skill sets and more than that, certain attitudes and mindset. Uh, to participate right. in the fourth industrial wave. This includes, for example, people with initiative, mm -hmm. people with creativity. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, as we discussed earlier, a bunch of repetitive tasks, mm -hmm. be they mental or be they physical, are getting replaced by AI and robotics. Mm -hmm. So therefore, these are the skills uh, at a premium, mm -hmm. uh, initiative and creativity. Mm -hmm. In Pakistan, are we prepared? You know, who is ever really prepared? But in Pakistan, we are perhaps less prepared mm -hmm. than, than many other countries. Right. And that is why we are working on these things, right. such as rolling out 3G, 4G very quickly, right. uh, which has happened uh, uh, in the last few years, yep. such as uh, the kind of incubators and innovation that we are trying to do, right. such as some of the things which Planning Commission has done mm -hmm. in terms of setting up R&D centers for robotics and AI and cybersecurity and cloud. Right. Uh, trying to move toward open data, right. so the government shares its data, open APIs, yeah. and such as some of the things Punjab IT Board has done in terms of e-government. Keeping in mind what's happening in US, in China, in the other part of the emerging countries, where do we stand? I think that Chinese progress is just astounding. Mm -hmm. in, in real dollars, in real income, they have grown 35 times in the last 40 years. Yeah. So it, to take an economy of that size, which is not a city state mm -hmm. like Singapore or Hong Kong, mm -hmm. at that kind of a growth trajectory is just amazing. And we know that whether it's in robotics, whether it is in transportation, mm -hmm. in AI, in, in supercomputing, mm -hmm. there are so many areas where they are catching up or they have even surpassed in some areas mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. So it's uh, they, are, they have transitioned from a kind of knowledge transfer investment based economy mm -hmm. now to a innovation based economy where they are uh, getting closer to the frontier of innovation. Mm. Generally what we see is that the United States had a more kind of organic growth. Yeah. Uh, you know, venture capital started up, government played a, played a role definitely because they funded projects in Hewlett Packard or Fairchild Semiconductor, which was the parent of Intel. Yeah. But uh, they took a certain amount of years or decades 
but other countries seeking to catch up quickly and not take the same 70 years like Israel or India they brought in the startup India package or digital yeah. India that you yeah. were mentioning earlier yeah. Yeah. or Israel brought in its incubator program mm -hmm. and its Yozma program fund of funds mm -hmm. and the most I think tightly kind of strategic plan mm -hmm. tightly knit plan is China mm -hmm. now coming to Pakistan at this time we do have a five-year plans but they are not as closely implemented and integrated as the Chinese five-year plan right the Pakistan five-year plan is more of a guideline mm -hmm. and uh, the the process of funding kind of loosely follows that right but certainly I, I would agree with you that at a federal level mm -hmm. there has to be there must be more coordination mm -hmm. between for example, what are the particular fourth industrial wave technologies mm -hmm. that are impacting uh, certain verticals in Pakistan, be that textile or food and beverages mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. even something you want to grow more like electronics. Right. And given that impact, what are the R&D centers across the country which are working on those technologies mm -hmm. and how can startups link with them mm -hmm. <clears throat> and with corporations in those areas right. to right. get quicker results? So right. that is an example of more central planning rather than let it be kind of crowdsourced and unplanned. We're really investing into our youth uh, in a right way. Are we sort of enabling them for the fourth or fifth industrial revolution wave? Now, the fourth industrial wave demands a lot of initiative and creativity mm -hmm. because a lot of change or innovation cannot come from corporations right. which are operation focused but from people all around. Yeah. That the reflection of that in the uh, in the education space is that, for example, not stifling curiosity in mm -hmm. children. I'm not going to yeah. say build curiosity. Yeah. I'm going to say don't stifle it. Yeah. And that is why we have like these makers fest movements around the world, mm -hmm. tools to build something in wood, or knitting, textile, or electronics, or like, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we certainly need more of that here. Right. I visited a village near Islamabad, Tumair village. And there they actually had a Makers Fest like environment in that government school. So it's possible, but again, that's probably something we're going to multiply by a thousand. We talked about Digi Skills or training later on. Yeah. The world is kind of trending toward Coursera and edX. Mm -hmm. Univers universities are becoming relatively less important mm -hmm. because they can't keep pace with the change. Mm -hmm. And it is becoming online, but to do an online course, mm -hmm. you need to have a lot of initiative. Right. Even in the US and random courses, the a random free courses, the completion rate is in single digit percentage. Mm -hmm. So right. you need initiative, right. you need creativity. Mm -hmm. If you don't have creativity, you can be replaced by AI automation. Right. So we need to, we, we have been able to demonstrate this mm -hmm. in bits and pieces. Right. We need to multiply it by 10,000. Right. How we can motivate everyone to participate in an ecosystem instead of creating their own ecosystem. You know, it takes time to change mindset. So we discuss an industrial wave or, or third or second industrial wave, mm -hmm. electricity, steam engine, paradigm or mindset which said a supervisor tells people what to do, mm -hmm. a teacher tells children what to learn. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to change these mindsets. Right. Now a new kind of paradigm that we are moving toward mm -hmm. with something like Internet of Things connecting devices mm -hmm. with 3G, 4G connecting so many people mm -hmm. and with blockchain is connectivity, deep connectivity. And I think it's Metcalf's law which says the power of a network increases by n squared where mm -hmm. n is the yeah. number of nodes. Yeah. So the network is very powerful. The more silos you have, as we know from enterprises, the less efficient it is, the less the right. creative flows. Right. So. So, so that's kind of the mindset of the philosophy behind it. Right. But certainly we are headed to a even more deeply connected world. Right. Even a world where, where it's going to be a huge paradigm shift where we don't have a federating authority, a central authority, mm -hmm. but everybody mm -hmm. just implementing the social contract mm -hmm. at peer-to-peer -peer level, which is blockchain. Right. right. So getting to that future, which may be two years out or five years or even ten years out in terms of having widespread impact, mm -hmm. we certainly need to open up our data, mm -hmm. uh, we need to become more transparent organizations, mm -hmm. uh, we, whether it's, yeah, that's government data or telco data or bank data, mm -hmm. energy data, electricity data, open up, people look at it, people analyze it, people learn from it, 
people build applications to leverage it and, and to benefit from it. When do you see a unicorn in Pakistan? In what year? A unicorn is a billion dollar company. Yeah. First of all, uni unicorns may be easier to do in larger economies like the US, mm -hmm. China and India. Mm -hmm. There's another term which emerged called ponies, which is $100 million yeah. valuation. Yeah. Now, now, when Ant Financial invested $185 million in Easy Pesa, yeah. Yeah. valuing it at $400 million plus, mm -hmm. to me, that was a unicorn slash pony. Government institutes, when would they be ready to Digitization is probably a big word, but when they would start to automate and you know then go towards the digitization. Okay. Uh, I'm just representing Ignite. Right. And Ignite is a technology innovation fund. Okay. Because it's a part of the Ministry of IT, I can mm -hmm. speak to uh, okay. some of the achievements there. Right, right. But generally speaking, remember Nadra, I think, is one of the most sophisticated national population databases yeah, in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's a big uh, I think that uh, the broadband penetration mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, smartphone usage mm -hmm. uh, is is showing some very healthy signs. Right. This is some of the infra, uh, the underlying infrastructure. Right. So I think that, and, and then we have organizations like Pral or PITB or some yeah. other ones who, are, yeah. who, have, who have made some good headway as well. But generally speaking, in terms of a, having a central strategy. Mm -hmm. I believe a digitization committee has now been formed okay. uh, at the initiative of Ministry of IT under the Prime Minister. Right. Because that's the kind of ownership you need yeah. for this kind of widespread automation. Yusuf, really, really appreciate your insight about the market and what you guys have been doing. So what is the message that you want to give to them? Well, if I can steal a thing I heard somewhere along the years somewhere, but I think it uh, expresses my feelings best, which are the future is now. Things are happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about the young, it's about the young at heart. Somebody right. may be 13 mm -hmm. or they may be 70 years old. Mm -hmm. If they are willing to learn, mm -hmm. to take risks, to show initiative, mm -hmm. they have the tools in their hands. Mm -hmm. They have the education tools in their hand. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, they, they can, they can uh, get training. Uh, mm -hmm. when they have access to 3G, 4G. Mm -hmm. They can participate in the global economy through freelancing. Right. They can set up startups. There's a lot of support for startups. Mm -hmm. The tools are in everybody's hands mm -hmm. who wants to do something right now.